Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Joni Young and I'm going to show you all step by step how to paint this bright and colorful um, fall landscape. I'm really excited because I love all the colors in this and we're going to go ahead and get started with the canvas I'm using today. Now keep in mind you can use anything smaller or bigger if you want. I happen to be using a 12 by 16 double primed and stretched canvas. I've got the following colors that I'll have a full list of below this video in the description box as well. Starting off with my neon colors by Holbein, neon red, orange, yellow warm, and just a touch of pink. And then I've got some uh, Arteza crimson red. And then the rest of the colors I'm using here are um, by Liquitex Basics, uh, blue turquoise, aqua green turquoise, hunter green or sap green. And I've also got uh, Mars Black and some Titanium White. So what I'm going to do first is just do a little bit of a mountain in the distance. And I'm going to approach this in a different way. So this is something you haven't seen before. This is a really interesting technique that we're going to just apply filter over after with the blue turquoise. So I'm going to use a little bit of black and white and make a charcoal um, mountain and then add a little bit of shadow down here first with a bit of a black base. And then we're gonna dry it off and we'll come over with a blue turquoise and build up from there. So if you guys are ready to paint along with me and watch this video, be sure to hit that subscribe. If you haven't already, it's free. And let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna be using my number 10 angle flat brush. And I'm using this one because I can cut in on an angle for my mountain, making it easier. I'm going to first get my brush just a little bit wet and then what I'm going to do is take a little bit of white and a little bit of black and I'll just mix up a darkish color right here and it will dry a little bit darker than this as well. Okay and then I'm just going to simply start over in this section here by adding a diagonal line and skipping a few spots. So this is of course just for those shadows and rocky parts of the mountain. The rest that are white or unpainted are gonna be um, the snow on the mountains, okay? So I'm just gonna go down the other side, kind of just twisting and pulling my brush to make these little shapes. I'm gonna just apply a little bit more water on my brush. You can see it's getting a little bit dry. And taking advantage of the angle of this brush to make some interesting little marks and ridges on my mountain. And then I'm gonna have another one a little bit lower right here. So I'll take some more paint. A lot of this might get covered up by trees. So don't worry too, too much about how it looks and don't spend too much time. Just kind of keep it patchy. Having some lighter and darker areas. And then We'll add another one in the distance here. So you can use the tip of your brush too, to add little wiggly thinner lines like this. So I'm going to leave that for now and just let that dry. And then I'm going to come down here on the bottom and I'm going to take some black again, a little bit of white in there, just to make a, a dark charcoal color. You can just do straight black if you want. And I'm going to start by creating a little scoop right here. So 
So about halfway down the canvas, you just scoop around like this. This is gonna be where we have some trees on the side and it's gonna be really dark right at the base. We'll take a little bit more black just for down here. And then we're just going to come in and curve this a little bit. So curve down a little bit like this. And then I'm just going to start coming in and making this really patchy. Traveling around with my brush. I'm going to add a little bit more. So of course we're going to have our, and you can also tap like this too, we're going to have our, our leaves, all those crimson colored maple leaves scattered on the road. So I want you to use your brush in two different ways, right? So the wiggly lines like this, you can use the tip of your brush and turn your brush around too. So this is gonna give it a more of a natural look to how your leaves have fallen. And then use the, just the very tip and just kind of tap and dab around like this. We're gonna bring it all the way over to this corner here and the right side. I'm getting a little bit of water on my brush. Now the reason why we're leaving these little white patches, spaces in between is for the filter of blue turquoise that we're gonna add. So tap, 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 and then just a little skinny line around the corner like that. And then right about here, we're gonna leave just a little space from this skinny line. We're gonna leave about a finger space, okay? Just roughly like that, and then we're gonna pull across We're gonna come in right around here. And add the dark, dark base for the next set of trees that will be on this side of the road. I'm gonna come in with a little bit more black now. Tap, tap, tap. This one you can be really loose and messy, okay? It's gonna work in your favor. It'll help those leaves look like they've fallen naturally and not neat and tidy like. So you don't wanna create a pattern. If you notice a pattern starting to happen, sometimes it's a good idea to just, I'm um, just adding a little bit more black here. It's a good idea to kind of just stop what you're doing and stand back and have a look and then you'll know okay well it looks like I'm doing rows or a pattern this way and so then you know you can come back in and just make um, a few little dots and dabs over top or make some of them bigger
Remember, we're not painting every leaf individually one at a time. We're gonna make it look like a whole bunch of leaves just by the way we use our brush in a tapping kind of wiggly patchy way like this and then coming over top with more colors. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is dry this all off and then we're gonna come in with our filter of both turquoises. We'll start with the blue one here and then we'll come in and start adding a little bit of the green. So I'm just gonna take my hair dryer and speed up the drying process time. Okay, so it's all dry. We can now start coming over top. And I'm gonna be using a larger brush for this. This is a number 30 filbert brush. Just use any brush that you want. It's just to get some coverage over top of this done uh, quicker and easier with a larger brush. So you can use a glazing medium if you want. However, I've just taught myself over the years, uh, I didn't even know at the time when I was teaching myself how to create a filter. I, I didn't know about a glazing medium. Um, so I've just gotten really comfortable with using a little bit of water on my brush and the paint. You must be using a transparent paint for it to work um, unless you want it to look kind of foggy. Um, in this case, it is going to look a little bit foggy in the distance. So it's okay if you mix a little bit of white and another blue or green to make um, something similar to these colors today. Um, but I'm going to take just, like I said, a little bit of water in my brush and some of this blue turquoise, and I'm going to start <clears throat> applying it right over top. I'm going to take a little bit more water on my brush. And as you can see, you really don't need a lot of paint. We're going to soften this, of course. So I'm going to take a little bit of the aqua green and a little bit of white now, mix that up, and I'm going to start applying it right over it. And that's going to make those mountains look nice and foggy in the distance. I'm going to come in with one of my dry mop brushes. Um, just to soften this even more. I've got a little bit too much water on my brush, so just by doing this, I can kind of just clean it up a little bit and give it more of a softer appearance. And then I'm going to come down here with a turquoise green, the aqua green. And I'm using a little bit of both turquoises. And I can continue to just use this brush. I want to keep the road a little bit lighter so that's why I'm using a bit of the turquoise um, aqua green and I'm going to switch right over back over to my 30 filbert
just to blend this around. And it doesn't matter about the edges here because we're going to be using different colors for that. So don't worry too much about that, but I'm just going to bring a little bit more of that turquoise blue and green just around the corner. And then just with another dry mop brush, just kind of tap around. No water, just dry, absolutely dry. And just tap, tap, tap like this. Then I'm gonna take some white. Again, my brush is still dry. And I'm gonna start applying white here, very softly around in circles with my brush. Create some fog and mist. Make it look like everything's far away and we've got a beautiful misty fall morning. I'm gonna take a little bit more, be a little bit more generous right in this area. We're gonna transition into a light pink pretty soon. Okay, now that that is dry, I'm going to take a little bit more white and that pink. So we've got a nice soft bubblegum pink color in here. Just a little bit more of the white. And we're going to start adding it right in here. And then just gently sweep over the background like that. I'm going to work that paint out of my brush off on the towel. Just dry it off a little bit. Come right back in here. Soften, soften, soften. Work it up here in the middle a little bit. Okay, next color. Light yellow. This is a, happens to be a neon yellow. It's kind of like a marigold color. So you could just use a, a warm, any warm yellow that you have. It doesn't have to be um, um, neon. And I'm just gonna start tapping for the beginning stages of those background trees. So you can turn your brush side like this, making some taller birch looking trees. A little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna wash that brush out. And I'm gonna just pull and sweep. Gently blend this down here. I'm going to add a little bit of black with my neon orange, a little bit of water, and I'm going to pull across again. And then I'll be pulling up little tree trunks. So you can use that line as a base for your tree trunks. Load our brush up again. You don't want to make them all look the same either. So you can have a few that are leaning, kind of crisscrossing, and then clean that line up once more.
I'm going to use a liner brush to add a few um, branches. So I've got a long little liner brush here. Use anything that you've got or you feel comfortable with. You want to make sure you have enough water on your brush to really be able to kind of wiggle and move around. So you may have to often go back for more water. Wiggle and pull just a few little branches here and there. Remember it's far away, so you don't want to overdo um, too much detail. I'm going to do is build up a little bit of depth down in here. So I'm going to take that yellow, black, orange, a little bit more of that yellow, the neon yellow. So neon yellow, orange, and black. So you get a color kind of like that. And I'm going to tap down here on the bottom, the base. I'm going to tuck those trees in there. And adding a few uh, shadows. For the leaves. I can make some of them a little bit taller. Pick a few to make a little taller. And then I'll take a little bit of white. And I'm just using a little filbert brush here. This is a number eight. I think I forgot to mention that. And then just start tapping in a little bit more but see how pretty I think that dusty pink that pink that we've got back there looks so pretty with this so we're just slowly building up the layers here I like to have a little bit of white in there to keep it nice and soft and bright for that light going on there in the distance or ahead of us. It's not too, too far away, I guess. Now, if you don't have a filbert brush, you can use a little fan brush or a, any kind of brush that you can stipple with and tap with. It'll make your trees look kind of bushy like this, okay? Once again, I'm going to add a little bit of white and turquoise, more white. So I guess you could say you're just going to tint your white with a little bit of green turquoise. And I'm going to start coming in here, making these little scoops. and then blending it and stumbling around. We're just creating more of that light in the center there.
Use Mop Fresh to soften. This will only work if it's wet enough, the paint or the brush. And I think I'll keep it like that and we can move on to uh, the next step, phase of this painting. So I'm going to come underneath with my um, angle brush again. So if you're just tuning in, I've got uh, number 10 angle brush. I'm going to use that same color we just applied, tinted white with the aqua green turquoise. So titanium white, aqua green turquoise, more white than the turquoise. And make it nice and bright back here. You get a sense of light going on. And then we'll just kind of make it look a little bit patchy here on the road with little dabs of barely anything left on our brush. Just a little bit of what we've got left from adding it there. Okay, so the next phase of this painting is more tree trunks. I'm going to take that black again. I'm going to use a little bit of my neon orange. If you have a really, really dark brown, you can go ahead and use that. I'd like to show you how to mix colors that we already are using and have on our palettes. And I'm going to make the next row of trees and so we're going to start building up to um, uh, the next color. We're going to mix some warm yellow with the neon orange. I'm going to be adding some more orange to my palette here. And so we'll make these a little bit darker and taller. So I'm going this way. Now we're going to start to have some coming out from here as well. So you can just use the very tip of this brush as a liner brush. Bring it down a little bit lower even. It's going to be covered up anyways. And it'll just give us a sense that it's a little closer to us and it'll set that back farther. And I'm going to take a little bit of this again once more, mix it up. So we have sort of like a fudgy brown color. And I'm going to start to add some of this here. This will build up nicely to our red. a little bit pointier with some shadows and leaves coming out here. We'll make this corner a little sharper. So this is the leaves on the side continuing around this corner if you're wondering what that is. Okay, the next color I'm going to take is my sap green and I'm just going to start dabbing it over here. I 
add a little bit down here as well. All these little bits of colors are going to bring your painting to life. Don't skip them. Unless, of course, you don't have the colors. Use whatever you have that's similar. Okay. All right, so for the next color, I'm going to be applying some neon orange, and I've, I've run out, so I'm going to be adding a little bit more here. So this is the brand I use, it's Holbein, and they come in a set. Uh, you can get them on Amazon or uh, many fine art stores. I'm going to be using my fan brush. This is a number five. It's acrylics, the acrylic series. I'm not going to get my brush wet. I'm just going to go right into my neon yellow and neon orange. I'm not over mixing. Just get a, a bit of each. And I'm going to start. I like using this brush for making it look like um, maple trees. does a great job. So I'm kind of on an angle like this, right? And then we'll go over to the other side, do the same thing, not over mix. We're going to have a green tree that comes up there and one in here too. So that's why I'm not going over that. Add a little bit more color, just kind of at the base here. Okay, and then the next color I'm going to be adding is some neon red. With my neon orange, tap, tap, tap in there. We're going to start just partially over it, over where we left off on the last one. And then we're going to start bringing some down here. So I'm going to take more of that neon red. And we're going to do a layer around the base of this ground where the trees are. So it comes out. Then back over. And behind there, this is going to be covered up by um, some more trees, of course, but we have a hint of it in there. I'm going to add some in here now. three colors, yellow, orange, and red. Bring it a little bit up over top. It's going to be a bit darker here. Transition into that green. And then 
I'm going to add the leaves down here later, but right now I'm going to take some of that crimson red. I'm going to tap a little in here so it looks a little bit darker on this side, okay? So we've got more of a shadow. And then I'm just going to take, I know this is really messy, I'm just going to take my finger and add a little shadow right there. Now we can start coming in with that crimson red. Dabbing it on different ways, directions with your brush to keep it from looking like a pattern. Always remember that. Okay, so the next um, layer, I'm going to start adding a little bit of crimson red here. And then we're going to come in with our green. Go right up to the top. And I'm going to take my number eight filbert brush again. I'm going to take some green. Just kind of bring it over here, mix a little bit of crimson red with it, and we can make a dark, nice dark brown color, very similar to what we made earlier. Nice and flat on the tip of your brush. And Gonna come over this again and just pull out for a little shadow there. Same with right here. Mix up a little bit more. I don't want to use black just yet. I want to wait for my trees, my last layer of trees to use the black. So this is just a, a darker, um, more of a dark brown color. And we're going to add a few wiggly branches like this and then come in with some green. use a liner brush if you want or you can just get the tip of this a little bit wet and just wiggle out some branches that are mostly going to be covered up right with the pine needles and leaves and, and stuff whatever type of tree you want to paint bring this down a little bit lower and add a little bit more black right in here. I'm ready to start coming in with the green now and I'm going to use my fan brush again okay so I'm going to take some green 
little bit of the warm yellow and we'll make more of an olive green color here. I'm just going to start tapping. Overlapping. It's okay if you pick up a little bit of that red. The colors will mix nice together. Okay, then I'm going to use a little bit more of my sap green this time, less of the yellow. Okay, and then we're just going to tap. We have a little tree top there. little bush in there. Okay, I know I want a little bit more color here, so I'm going to, with a clean brush, take my red and my neon orange. It's getting pretty thick here, but that's okay. I'm just going to start adding that right between the warmest, brightest yellow and the green. And then just take a little bit more of that yellow, warm yellow, kind of tap and dab it in and around the green area. Okay, so we're ready for our next trees. I'm going to go back to my number eight again, and I'm going to take black. So I'm going to add one right here. Goes all the way off the canvas. Make this one a little thicker. So they all look a little bit different. You don't want them to all look the same. And then one maybe a little straighter up and down. Coming in and tapping a little bit more black in here. Some more shadows in between here. Just swishing my brush around. Just some little patches that will just look like shadows. And then some more black. For another big tree right here. Right off the canvas. And then a dark, dark base right here. And a skinnier tree here. A few little branches. I'm going to go to my number two round brush 
get some water on it and we'll start adding some branches in here. Okay, some water really is going to help work that paint out of your brush. You need a little bit more patience when you're working with small um, round brushes or liner brushes. Okay, and just go ahead and add those branches wherever you want. Whatever you don't like, you can just cover up with some foliage. Kind of like to do a little twist and wiggle. To add a little bit more character to some of my trees. Okay, I'm going to leave that as is and I'm going to start coming in with my leaves down here on the bottom. I'm going to use uh, my number two little flat brush here and I'm going to take some black and some crimson red, a little scoop of each, and I'm going to start adding little dabs. Sometimes more of the black is going to come out, sometimes more of the red. We're going to start building up to those leaves here in the foreground. So you can just do little patches. It's really beginner friendly. Like this is not technical at all. So it's not a specific brush stroke or anything you need to practice. If anything, you just got to practice loosening up because most people starting to paint are so tight and nervous that it's hard for them to paint loosely and be okay with being a little bit messy. Okay, we're going to start having a few smaller ones here. Remember who you're creating. If you notice you're creating a pattern, rows or any kind of pattern, remember to stand back and have a look and change it up if that's happening. But see how nice it is to have that turquoise underneath for a cool shadow on a road. I just love it. Um, these are things that you learn by watching tutorials because uh, most people, including myself, way back in the day when I was approaching a painting, I would just think that I needed to add black for my road and maybe a little bit of white to create a gray to lighten any areas. And it just goes to show you that there, it, it's just so out of the box when it comes to um, color combinations and different... Um, tones, temperatures, you can take your paintings and landscapes in and it's really fun to see different versions. And, and uh, I want to mention while I'm talking about different versions, I love seeing your guys' versions on our Facebook group. You guys are so amazing. Oh, and Instagram too. I'm seeing a lot on Instagram. Pinterest too. I don't know how many people still do Pinterest, but um, I share my tutorials and lots of stuff. I love Pinterest, so um, there's lots to see on there, and you can share wherever. I love looking at all your your work, so keep it coming. I'm going to make some of these bigger, so I'm taking really thick amounts of paint. So these ones are closer to us, right? So I'm going to make some of these blobs thicker so it looks like they're more in the foreground.
And we'll just keep building up, adding more and more red, less black. I love all the seasons. People will ask me, what's your favorite season? Oh, it's really hard to pick because I think that each one is equally beautiful. They all have their unique qualities that make them special and beautiful. I'm going to start adding a little bit of what I've got left here for neon red and then I'm going to squeeze some more out. And I'll leave this here for a bit and we'll start coming in with our trees. So I want to use um, a different brush now to add the leaves on these maple trees. And I'm going to be using my one inch oval mop brush and I'm going to use my crimson red first. My brush is dry. You don't want to have water on your brush. Otherwise you're going to not have the nice poofy shape that you want. And I'm just going to start tap, tap, tapping. We still got that green back there and we can see it, right? I'll bring down a few lower branches here. And then we'll go ahead and go over to the other side. And then I'll just use what's left here and I'll tap around a little bit more. And wash that brush out. I'm going to come back in here and add a little bit more turquoise. I want to bring this in a little bit. We'll use both turquoises with a little bit of white. By tapping a little bit in like this, it's a little bit darker than the original color that we applied for the row. This is going to give us a few shadows, little spots, gravel, or just other tones in the road. And a little shadow coming down right there. Add a little bit back here. I'm going to take some of my sap green and the turquoises and make a little bit more of a cool green here. You can always go back and sneak in 
some more color after. Okay, rinse my brush off. I'm just taking more of the sap green. I'm gonna hold my brush like this and just kind of very lightly drag on an angle. Just blend this down a little bit lower. A little bit more white, the turquoise. scatter this around. Okay, so what I want to do next is add a little bit more of my neon red with some crimson. I'm going to bring this up a little bit higher. Just tapping in for some leaves back there. Take some neon orange and place it above here. A little bit of the neon yellow warm. Place it a little bit over above and on the green. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with my final layer for my trees, more of the neon red. I'm going to use a smaller fan brush this time. This is a zero. I'm just going to, with my brush that's dry, go right into that thick neon red paint. And I'm going to start dabbing it over part of the existing um, crimson red, the darker red. And start to scoop as we get up to the top and then down here it's a little bit more on an angle and then a scoop okay so let's go ahead and start adding some on this side now you can apply it to the wet crimson if you want. You'll get a nice transition there. Or you can apply it to dry paint as well. Keep in mind it's going to dry a little bit darker than how you see it right now. So you might want to come back the next day or a few hours later, however long it takes to dry, and decide if you wanna um, add some more. You can add a little bit of white to your brush and with the red if you want to make sure that it dries nice and bright.
I'm gonna come in here and add a little bit. I'm just going to overlap a little bit on that yellow back there and it's going to give it, look at that nice pop you get over top of some of that pink. Okay, so now it's time to come in here and add some bright red to our maple leaves. I'm going to have a few little ones here on the road. They're going to be a lot smaller, so just barely touch the canvas for those smaller ones. And then for ones that are closer to us, you're going to want to make them a little bit bigger. And don't try to make a shape of a maple leaf. Don't think about that. Just tap, tap, tap. Push a little bit more for those bigger ones. Now the whole fine paint I use is a little bit on the pricey side. Arteza or Arteza, same with Liquitex Basics, all have some really nice uh, shades of neon. Here's a little bit of a little bit more crimson red, just some neon orange. And a little bit back here on the other side. Okay, I'm going to take some more turquoises here. This, that part of the road a little bit darker and then just kind of go over here and pull a little bit of that red in there for shadow so the red and the turquoises together will make kind of a purple color I want the shadow on the road to be a little bit duller see-through And then just a little bit of turquoise and white right here to make it brighter. Just right in this area here. Take a little bit of white with my sap green. And a few little scattered patches in here. A little in between 
those branches. Some more black. You can just catch a little bit underneath some of these little dabs for some more shadows. Now another alternative for blue, if you don't have uh, the turquoise blue, um, you could use a phthalo blue. That would look really, really pretty. So again, all I'm doing is just cutting in with a little bit of black and then around all these other colors and patches of flowers. Or <laughs> leaves, not flowers. <laughs> And then right here at the base, again. And if you pull little lines like this, an angle will feel like it's more like a, a bank or a hill. So this painting is just about done. Right in here, I'm going to take some red and black and just on an angle, add it underneath some of these branches. Let's add a little bit more red in there. painting I want to thank you guys so much for watching all I'm going to do here is just add a few more dabs of my neon red this was really really fun to paint I love fall and I've got a whole playlist of fall and Halloween painting tutorials so you can check those out in my playlist and feel free to paint along with me I've got lots to share with you and teach you from the years of painting I've done and classroom teaching too. So it's something I'm passionate about. I love painting, but I really, really love teaching and sharing my joy of painting with you all. So be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, it's free of course. And just a little bit of black right here over those tree trunks. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you in another video. Bye!